It's not the government, the church, or even our schools. The home is the actual foundation of all societies, and it is steadily deteriorating. Do you realize how valuable your home is? Are you willing to do the homework required to be an influencer, a home influencer? Welcome to Homework with Kim. I'm Kimona Ferguson, and together we take a candid look at our homes and the work we need to do within its four walls and in our families in order to fulfill our God-given assignments. Just look around, you see it. We have some homework to do, so let's get started. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Homework with Kim. I'm your host, Kim. Thank you so much for joining me here where we take a candid look at our homes and the work we need to do within its four walls to ensure that at the end of a long, hard day, when our heads hit the pillow, we can truly declare home sweet home. I want to start off once again by saying a special thank you to those of you who take the time each week to listen to the podcast. I don't take for granted this great privilege you have given me to borrow your ear for just a few moments. And again, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm also very happy to announce that on this, the 10th episode of Homework with Kim, as at the time of this podcast, the Homework with Kim, drum roll please, Homework with Kim now has a YouTube channel. You heard that correct. We now have a YouTube channel and it's something that persons have been asking me to set up from just after I recorded the first episode and I have obliged and I've set up the YouTube channel and all the episodes up to this point are now over on YouTube. So please, please, you can pause where you are or maybe you're watching this on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and it is the perfect space for you to leave your feedback on the episodes. So happy to announce that. Thank you again for subscribing in advance and commenting and engaging over there. It's going to be a real exciting community. And now it's even easier to share the episodes as I'm going to ask you to do because, you know, with just one hit of a button, you know, you can share a YouTube video. So thank you again for doing that. Of course, you may also continue to listen to Homework with Kim on the podcast players, as was the case before. That has not changed. So you can still listen to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. And guess what? You can listen by saying, Alexa, play Homework with Kim podcast on TuneIn. And really just about anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast, just put in a search. If all else fails, go to Google search, type homework with Kim and you'll find the podcast there. So many options. Please take advantage of at least one and encourage those close to you to do the same as well. I truly, truly appreciate it in advance. Now let's get into it. Often on a Friday, we tend to say TGIF, thank God. God, it's Friday. As we come to the end of another week and we approach the weekend, there's this real exciting feeling because it's about time for us to put up our feet and relax, right? Friday is usually a day when many of us, well, not me, because all my days are pretty much the same. (laughs) But if you work in corporate or you follow a strict timetable that involves a work week or for school children, you know, the weekend is usually the time when you look forward to relaxing and weekend of course means no school till monday and maybe fridays are for movies games saturdays are for tv screens outings etc the point is entertainment is usually enjoyed to a much greater extent as we approach friday saturday And it usually tapers off at around Sunday evening. 
But friends, even though it's Friday and it's supposed to be a feel-good day or a feel-good evening and perhaps you've had a rough week and you're just looking forward to relaxing, but I want us to have a serious conversation. And this conversation is about our massive consumption of crime-centered entertainment. Now, my brother forwarded a video to my sister and I that showed a very popular Jamaican music selector and entertainer i suppose and also an influencer unfortunately he has 400 plus thousand followers on instagram so that's a large following right and he was holding in that video what appeared to be a makeshift gun with what appeared to have fire at its makeshift nozzle He pointed it at the patron, then he motioned, emptying the gun with this jerking motion on the patron as he fell to the ground, that is the patron, while all the other persons standing around videoed this, laughing and carrying on like the fools they clearly are. And the video was captioned, it named the event, and it said, so-and-so was crazy last night, followed by some laughing emojis. You heard me. Motioning, clearly shooting someone to the ground. Persons laughing, videoing it, running up and down. He captioned it with laughing emojis. Now, I saw this madness and I was encouraged by my brother to look at the comments. The comment section under this post had a few persons with sense, clearly, but unfortunately, it was mostly populated by another set of fools. One commenting, and I quote, It's a movie, followed by about three laughing emojis. Another said, Jamaica is not a safe place. And that comment was followed by several laughing emojis jamaica is not a safe place that is hilarious friends this post was made just two days since the mass shooting at a football game in old harbor saint catherine on sunday afternoon as this video was posted on wednesday The same shooting that left three people dead. How then can we still find gun violence, whether real or as a form of entertainment? And how can it still, as Jamaicans, appear to tickle our funny bone? I know many are saying, oh, it's unrelated. You're comparing oranges and apples. One represents real life, the other is just amusement. Am I right? Is there really no relationship? When we hear some ridiculous news coming out of Jamaica, the current thing to say is Jamaica is a movie or Jamaica is not a real place. And I know this is often said innocently, but Whatever we are entertained by affects us and eventually makes us desensitized. We end up becoming comfortably numb and end up raising children who are comfortably numb and comfortably dumb. We end up raising terrorists. And I know some people may be saying, you can't call people dumb. Yes, I can. These are young men and sometimes women who act in a completely thoughtless and foolish manner without giving it any consideration or using good judgment. That is what it means to be dumb. 
the modus operandi of a people who are comfortably numb and dumb, is shooting up a gathering of innocent people, taking the lives of people who have done nothing to you and who you do not even know personally and you do this out of vengeance. You are numb and dumb. Now that I've gotten that off my chest, we were discussing our extremely dangerous fascination with crime-centered entertainment and how desensitization will eventually follow from it. Friends, we are so aware of its effects that we observe young children. I don't know if you've seen it. I know I have young children watching violent cartoons, playing violent video games and watching violent TV shows. Come on, let's put an end to that. Let's nip that in the bud. Find these young boys other games to play besides those that reward them with points for murdering and shooting people opponents. Parents, use your noodle. Use your brain. That is not a safe, nor is it a harmless form of entertainment. Two studies looked at the idea that watching violent media lessens the amount of help given to persons in suffering. In study one, Participants spend 20 minutes playing a violent or non-violent video game. They heard a loud brawl outside the lab after the game while they were filling out a questionnaire. One person was hurt. Comparatively to those who played non-violent games, those who played violent games took longer to assist the hurt party downplayed the severity of the conflict and were less likely to quote-unquote hear the fight. In study two, both violent and non-violent moviegoers saw a young woman outside the cinema struggling to pick up her crutches before or after the film. Participants in the violent movie condition took longer to assist than those in the other three conditions. The results of both research imply that exposure to violent media dulls viewers' perceptions of the suffering and pain of others. Now, while seeing violence on screen may desensitize us to it, I'm certainly not saying it causes us to act violently. Desensitization, however, is a serious problem. Desensitization might prevent us from properly processing a dreadful crime and the person or people it might affect. It is not without consequence. Now, beyond how we perceive crime and its victims, Overconsumption of this violent music, violent TV shows, violent video games, you name it, can have a profound and negative impact on our own thinking and health. According to Pennsylvania researchers in a study published in Pediatrics, the more parents watch these kinds of violent movies and are entertained by these violent games, the more parents watch, the less they care. According to a recent U.S. study, parents who have experienced frequent exposure to sexual content and violent scenes in films may become desensitized and more willing to permit their children to view such material. Guess what else? Desensitization may cause the violence in PG-13 movie films to escalate. And this is according to research from the Annenberg Public Policy Center at the University of Pennsylvania. Now listen. The last time I went to a PG-13 movie, I was shook. 
I asked, since when these things are permitted in PG-13 movies? Because I remember back then, you know, when I was a little younger, a PG-13 movie was a PG-13 movie. Now there is so much more violence, so much more nudity. And all of this happens because of the desensitization. So the creators keep pushing the limit. So just don't look at the ratings, parents. If any at all possible, do your due diligence before leaving your young children to watch these movies unsupervised. Don't trust the ratings. Check out the movie. Do some research yourself. Now listen to this. Researchers showed 1,000 parents a series of graphic clips from films such as 8 Mile, Die Hard, Taken 2, and The Terminator. According to the study, parents considered the minimum age for consuming such content should be around 17 after the first viewing. The questioned parents lowered the minimum age by three or more years by the sixth and final viewing. We know these scenes are fairly upsetting to parents, said Dan Roma, main author of the study. When parents first watch these, they advise not allowing anyone under the age of 17 to see them, which is equivalent to a R classification. However, as they watch it, they become more accepting of the content. The study's authors also claim that parents who work for the Motion Picture Association of America, that is the MPAA, are also vulnerable to the same type of desensitization. According to the report, MPAA reviewers may be more tolerant when it comes to determining the suitability of such content for minors. The study believes that the phenomena can explain what is called, and I quote, ratings creep, which is the inclusion of increasing violence in films geared at young people. Violence in popular PG-13 films has Increased since 1985, according to a supplementary 2013 report issued by the APPC. It was also discovered that popular PG-13 films in 2012 included more gun violence than R-rated films in the same year. If you are a moviegoer, you would have picked that up. As a result, the study's authors warn that our entire culture may be desensitizing to violent movies with unknown implications. Friends, crime has grown so pervasive in our lives that the boundary between what affects us and what does not touch us has been blurred. Desensitization happens as a result of frequent exposure, which then results in a reduced emotional response to that which is negative. The perception of violence in general, we know, has altered dramatically as a result of what we see in the media and in the music. It is accompanied by the feeling of normalcy and that violence is okay, at least as long as it's amusing. The empathy we have felt, particularly as Jamaicans, has now lessened. It is true, it is hard to say it, but it's true. It has lessened due to how frequently violence is depicted on our TVs and also in other formats. We are confused between facts and fiction because we see crime so frequently in the media. We hear it on a popular rhythm being sung about. And we see your favorite entertainers make light of it and exploit it to put on a show. We appear to have lost sight of the fact that reality is not a movie. 
and that the prevalence of crime requires serious attention rather than ignorance. Friends, I hate to burst your bubble. Well, no, I don't hate to. Jamaica is not a movie. It's not a film. And unfortunately, even if it were, even an R rating would not suffice. Violence is not exclusive to just crime-related media, but as I said before, it's also in the music. In this dance hall that they say can't stall, well, it need to stall. As far as I'm concerned, it need to pack up if all they will sing about is sex and violence. This type of content put on a rhythm may also desensitize people to violence. The issue here is that not all violent information is equal and technology has given us the capacity to encounter violence secondhand through a multitude of outlets. Desensitization can be seen through two paradigms. Personal experience, which many of us in a reach to it personally yet, but I have a feeling it's very close with how Jamaica run, as well as media availability. The majority, the young, the old, we can't run from it. For those who take public transport, some of us, you can't run from it. You don't want to hear it, but you're being bombarded by it. I go into a particular establishment to pick up my packages and on their TV, I, when I looked up and saw it and I saw Phoebe's eyes looking at the TV, I nearly keel over. I said, you cannot be showing these things in the public like that when children are caught violent on the TV in this public place where they know that children and different people are coming in completely desensitized. So what do we do? Reduced consumption is the solution in this case to avoid desensitization. Now, this may be easier said than done in an era where there are countless shows and movies and songs in various genres that include some form of violence. Nonetheless, it is a worthwhile solution to pursue, especially as we seek to do the homework to take back our families and take back our nation. So we will try to pursue reduced consumption, reduced consumption for ourselves of violent media, violent music, and especially for our children. So this must be done on a personal level and also at the household level within our families. As I close, I encourage you to pay attention to the language, the tones, and whether there's any form of violence in the media your children are consuming, even if it's a cartoon, because these producers are getting really crafty. Catch it early. Stop it in its tracks. We must endeavor to lessen the negative impacts of these violent media on our children, on our youngsters, and allow them to be able to enjoy some content without becoming desensitized to these very awful, very violent acts that we are having to experience daily and help to save the ones that can be saved because some, unfortunately, have already become desensitized as many of the adults have and have paved the way for their children to become desensitized. Maybe there is a process where we can reverse it. I'm not sure. But in the meantime, let's work to lessen the consumption, to reduce the consumption, and if possible, to eliminate the consumption, as far as we're concerned, of this violent, crime-centered forms of entertainment. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great weekend. Ensure that the movies the family is watching, the children are watching, is crime-free, violence-free, 
nudity for all that good stuff so that we can aim so that our children will be spared from becoming comfortably numb and comfortably dumb by way of the process of desensitization again i invite you to follow me on social media follow the podcast page on instagram at homework with kim and of course again please head over to youtube and subscribe to the channel thank you in advance i would love to hear your feedback over there on youtube and i will respond to every comment thank you thank you thank you so much Again, have a great weekend and many, many blessings. Until we meet again, just look around. You see it. We have some homework to do. So let's get started.